Let's talk about chiller approach and how that impacts the system, how you calculate it, how you can use it, and just my overall thoughts and experience on it. Approach is the ability for your heat exchanger to exchange heat, and it's a heat transfer rate. We're seeing how well the heat in the refrigerant on the outside of these tubes is able to transfer to the inside of the tubes and hit the water. This would be considered more of a flooded type design, but this is a condenser. This specifically came from a York OptiView control panel, but it made a really good example for what we're discussing here because of the small temperature difference right there. That is actually the calculated approach value. And what they did for us here is they actually put the calculation right here. These two numbers is what's being calculated. It's the leaving condenser liquid temperature and the condenser saturation temperature subtracted from each other. And that difference gives you your approach value. Small temperature difference is just how York refers to it, but inevitably it means approach. Before we can get too deep into the approach conversation, we need to understand some differences in the different types of heat exchangers. Now, for the most part, on a condenser, most of those are pretty much the same. It's it, They're going to take more of the flooded type concept when in terms of your parameters that you're going to be looking for now if it was say a tube and tube condenser or something like that that would be a different set of parameters but if you're talking a shell and tube or shell and tube then you're, you're discussing you know basically the flooded type the same parameters we would use actually for all three of these truly but we'll get into that a little more these specifically we're going to focus more on the evaporator side and the and it's going to apply either way. I'll just, I'm going to, my terminology will be more oriented towards the evaporator or low pressure side. As you can see, we have a flooded type, a mixed falling film, also known as a hybrid system, and a full falling film. The flooded is the kind of the old school design, if you will. A lot of people still use a flooded type evaporator, but it's definitely gotten heavily away from. And it's strictly for the simple fact that, you know, it's it requires all this additional refrigerant. You see where this liquid level is right here. I mean, that is a ton of additional refrigerant that is required in order to run. Well, in just today's day and age, one, customers don't like to spend that much refrigerant whenever it leaks. Two, it costs a lot more to manufacture. Three, the service time for that repair significantly increases because you have so much additional refrigerant to recover. Other than the flooded type evaporator or a heat exchanger, you have a full falling film heat exchanger as well. What this heat exchanger's job is to literally it sprays the refrigerant down over the piping in order to allow it to fully evaporate before it ever even hits the bottom. And if you notice, there's basically no look standing liquid down in the bottom of the heat exchanger. And that's on purpose. It has a spray rails up top that you, you'll have your actual refrigerant injected through the liquid line inside the top of the evaporator and it's going to distribute that liquid, you know, across the whole length of the of the heat exchanger. Whereas on a flooded type you know, our liquid is coming into the bottom side and just kind of, it gets distributed, but or most of the time there'll be some some form of distribution plate in there. But, you know, its, it's job is just to fill up the from the bottom side. Well, a falling film evaporator, you know, it does the exact opposite. And so you have an extreme reduction of, of the amount of refrigerant required, as this little note here says. You know, it claims you can get up to a 40% reduction of charge over a flooded type. And so, I mean, that's a huge deal. You know, that's you still get the same efficiency. You can still obtain the same approach values. It's, it's heavily engineered for that. You, you'll also notice, look how the, the tube design, how different it is. Uh, I would say one of the big things is, one, they run smaller tubes, which in a lot of applications may not be a good thing especially if you've got very bad water they also run a lot more tubes so you notice here you know there's just they're larger and they're not as many there's a whole lot more and they're a lot smaller and i think these are pretty real to size in in terms of the actual application use the third type of 
heat exchanger and actually these two are the two that i actually see legitimately in the field is a mixed falling film or a hybrid evaporator a hybrid evaporator is exactly that so the goal is we're still using the concept of the falling film and having refrigerant rain down and just boil off as it goes and gets collected back into the suction it has a distribution block up top liquid refrigerant is still injected into the top of it uh, it goes through a metering device outside of this distribution block by the way this just it's already in a form of st it's already in a saturated state by the time it gets put in up here and then there's enough refrigerant left over that we can hit this bottom section here and actually have a little bit of standing liquid refrigerant in the bottom just not near as much so we're taking both concepts and putting them together because these this is extremely effective in terms of heat transfer because you know the, the goal is you have all of the liquid refrigerant submerged uh, all the piping well in this particular case we're reducing the charge required and we're getting a lot less refrigerant needed and we're still able to obtain some really solid efficiency numbers by having the refrigerant fully submerged let's talk about actual application so this is a picture of a train design. You see it's got the orifice plate coming in, liquid line. It's got a distribution plate in the bottom. Above that is going to be your tubing. And then you have your eliminator as they refer to it, which is literally just a wire mesh screen that helps distribute the pull on the refrigerant across the whole length of the barrel so it all doesn't allow it to collect in just one spot where the suction is so what we're focused on here is as this comes in say this refrigerant is at a 40 degree saturation and our leaving water coming out of the chiller is at a uh, 40 2 degree. We would take and do, do the difference between those which comes out to 2 degrees of approach so it's as simple as that. So what we have to focus on is, okay, what does it mean when we look at these numbers? Well, your saturation temperature on your evaporator side is always going to be lower than your actual water temp and vice versa on the condenser. What we're trying to understand is how well are we transferring that heat because we do have a design spec that we need to meet and that's also going to play a huge part in our efficiency as well. End of the day, the lower the approach value, the more efficient you're operating, the better you're transferring heat. Ideally, if you could run a zero degree approach, you're doing perfect and that's that's the most ideal scenario what's going to impact these tubes the most is two things first any kind of insulator you know issues such as you know that that could be as simple as literally just dirt or you know bad water calcium maybe even oil collecting on the outside of the tubes or like I was saying, you know, any kind of buildup or mud getting on the inside of the tubes, creating a thin layer inside of those tubes. That's going to cause a higher approach value because you're not able to transfer the heat as well. So in order to get the same water temperature out, we've got to now drop this uh, saturation down to about 38 to get the same 42 degree water because we're not transferring like we're supposed to the second thing is if you were to speed up or slow the water down so as you adjust the gpm through that heat exchanger you're going to cause this approach value to adjust as well the more gpm you move through that heat exchanger the lower it's going to help the approach maintain but again you have to be careful of that because you, you can't just run crazy amounts of gpm because you will end up wearing that heat exchanger and the bundle out and everything else that's in there. So you have to be measured with how you do that and how you utilize that. At the same time, if you run too low of a GPM, you can actually cause that approach to increase, which may sound kind of weird, you know, when you think about it, because, okay, well, if I'm running the water slower, I can cool it easier. Well, and that's true, but that heat exchanger still has to have so much heat input into it. And so when you run that water that slow, sure, we can cool it down but we're not going to be able to keep our saturation up because in the same way you know that the saturation is going to drop and if you have 
any kind of superheat control, you're going to struggle maintaining that superheat because what that metering device is going to have to do, now a train doesn't have this, but say you were working with a, a Daikin uh, turbo core setup, you know, it's it's helping run that system based off of superheat. You're going, to, you're going to cause that saturation to plummet because those EXVs are going to clamp down to protect the compressor from too low of a superheat. And that's why you're going to see that uh, that increase on approach because you're causing the water to reduce too much. I made a comment that the more GPM you push, the better it's going to help this approach. And that is true up to an actual point. I do want to make it clear that you can push so much GPM that it just can't grab the heat fast enough. And then you'll have a higher approach value strictly because you just you, the it can't the water's not getting processed the way it needs to not because you're not actually transferring the heat properly so there is an extreme either way where you start causing that approach value to increase and the closer you get that approach value to zero the better balance and the better you have that whole system set up as a complete unit and this is an example of a train condenser you know we got our discharge gas coming in liquid refrigerant going out whenever the condenser water is real dirty or maybe you've got a gpm issue come in and out it's going to affect it but let's say we had a leaving condenser water of 80 degrees well we got to be above it so our saturation on the barrel is going to be let's say 81 okay that's going to give us a one degree approach on that condenser barrel and now this is for a, a centrifugal design i'm about to get into other types of heat exchangers one note i do want to make before i get too far along is you do have a number of passes on that heat exchanger this will impact the approach value as its ability to transfer heat at certain gpms is significantly adjusted accordingly one of the things i haven't discussed throughout this entire conversation is what are the legitimate approach values we're looking for based off of the evaporators or based off the heat exchanger and i'm going to expand outside of just chillers or or even sp specifically water cooled centrifugals at this point and get into just most any kind of common heat exchanger type end of the day you'll see that this top one you have your flooded type evaporator and you'll notice that the water is inside the tubes and the refrigerant is outside this other type this they refer to it as a dry type in this diagram it's also known as a dx exchanger when you hear me reference it you'll you'll hear me use a dx heat exchanger in this specific instance the water is what's outside of the tubes and the refrigerant is inside of the tubes and so you'll have a little metering device here it'll be inputting in monitoring superheat here and that's how it's running most of the time these flooded designs where the refrigerant is outside of the tubes can typically maintain less than three that's a terrible three less than three degrees of approach whereas when you start stepping into dx design vast majority of the time i will see these anywhere from maybe four at the really low end if it's doing really well or if it's a newer system all the way up to about 10 degrees of approach when i'm working on these and i start seeing more than 10 degrees I start getting really concerned because something's just not right there. Something's not transferring properly. The actual most common field use of this is usually between six to eight degrees. Six is probably the most common that I run into. You also have tube and tube heat exchangers. Uh, you'll see those on a lot of like self contains or even your say your coax style with uh, uh, you know water source heat pumps as a, a those are those are also a tube and tube those will kind of be in those these same parameters at four to ten you'll see these dx types on a lot of your air cooled there are some air cooled equipment coming out with a flooded type like the yvaa for example but the vast majority of the air cooled you'll run into will either be a dx or the newest ones coming out of the factory will be a brace plate on the smaller side of the scale on a centrifugal chiller you don't you do not want your approach value higher than three degrees you start breaking more than three and something is something's wrong something's 
just not jiving right you need to take a serious look at that heat exchanger and find out what it is whether like i said it's the gpm maybe there's something in the tubes and you'd be brushed oil getting in the evaporator something but that'll wrap up this training i really appreciate it guys hope you all have a really good day if you're interested in supporting the channel i do have donation links down in the description that you are welcome to use it's always appreciated it really helps me make better investments for the content that i'm producing make sure whatever you do always make time for your family mtt they are they've got to be the most important part of everything we do it just it, it's hard to stay motivated in these extreme summer conditions whenever our family's just not in a good state and a good condition so we've got to make sure that we make that time and we're, we're being proactive about being apart 